Thanks, Isabella. Data beats intu intuition. I think that's a very good statement. Uh, I'm Daniel, I'm the founder of Lifeo, and I'm a space engineer. As a space engineer, you typically, you like to look to the stars, right? We like to look at Mars. We basically like to fly there. We like to fly to the moon. But what we also really like to do is basically looking back on Earth. With all the satellites which launched in the past decades, we can really measure the pulse of Earth. We can see so many aspects which are happening here uh, on our planet. And this was, for me, the motivation to start an Earth observation company, uh, basically five years ago. Um, what we already do, do today is we mo uh, monitor more than 500,000 kilometers of critical infrastructure. So I'm talking about railways, power lines, and pipelines. And a nice fun fact, that's more than the distance to the moon. Um, so I want to talk to you um, because we have so many stakeholders from the public sector here, so many decision makers, um, how you can basically use data from satellites uh, to improve our daily lives. And one very practical example is basically um, railways. I assume that a lot of you already have experienced train cancellations or train delays. And very often, um, these are caused because trees fall down on the railways. So, um, the German railway operator, Deutsche Bahn, is operating 34,000 kilometers of railways. And, you know, these trees always fall down in the storm. We have more, more storm events. So I asked myself um, four years ago, what are they doing to mitigate this problem? And basically, they're doing a lot. They have 1,000 people out there on a daily basis walking next to the railway, inspecting and doing the vegetation treatment. But still, all these damages happening. And then I thought, hmm, um, do they actually have a digital record uh, so that they can steer the workforce better? They didn't. So we started to collaborate with Deutsche Bahn, and they asked us a, a very, very simple question. How many railways are next to trees? I mean, you would think that's a simple question has a simple answer. But think twice about it. How do you get data for 34,000 kilometers in a reliable way? So the first idea was, okay, let's take tablets and send the thousand people there. They made assessments, they even started the process and they realized it will take us five years. Um, that's not good because the people who are doing the assessment, they also have to treat the vegetation. That's the real work they have to do, right? So they have to cut back, uh, they have to uh, plant new trees, um, and they have to uh, take care of sick trees. So basically, um, we gave them an answer from space. And how that works, one of our software engineers, Rebecca Allen, uh, will explain you in a short 30 seconds video. At Liveo, we take raw satellite data and turn it into something useful. The AWS cloud gives us this ability to quite quickly be able to store large amounts of data as we need. And then we apply machine learning models to that data. What we're really showing here is that it's possible to use space and technology to protect what we already have and make things better here on the ground. So that was just one practical example. But let's uh, zoom out a bit. Uh, what you see here on this graph um, is actually the sea surface temperature in orange and the power dissipation index um, in, in yellow. The power dissipation index is showing us how many tropical cyclones are happening. And the data is not lying, right? So there's climate change, and we will have more severe weather events. When I'm talking about we severe weather events, it's not just a hurricane, it's droughts, it's floods. And we basically um, have to change the way how we, how we take care of our modern life. Um, we need to protect all the outdoor assets, right? When I'm talking about outdoor assets, I'm talking about railways. That case we already got. I'm talking about power lines, I'm talking about pipelines. That's the linear infrastructure. But I'm also talking about streets. I'm talking about the buildings. And I'm also talking about the nat natural assets we're having, the forests, the rivers, the lakes. So we need to take care. And I want to give you a few examples uh, which really surprised me, where you can uh, measure from space uh, to, to improve processes. Insurance companies are typically very good in risk modeling. Um, in the past months, we have worked together with insurance companies, and we learned that um, so they're basically insuring houses against subsidence. 
insurance companies left the entire market of the UK and France in the past years, some insurance companies, because of droughts which happened in the UK and in France. There was not enough water in the soil, and the houses were subsiding. They were doing these insurances since decades, but one thing happened. They couldn't anymore use the data from the past to forecast the future. And this was something which was bringing me really, really to, to think about this. So we need to take all measures to understand problems, because only what we understand, we can change. And basically for us, um, ju just to give you some numbers, right? Um, working with utilities now for multiple years, what we learned in the past years is if you adopt to a data-driven approach, utilizing the data from satellites, you can um, reduce outages by 14% already after around three years. Another interesting effect is you can reduce the operational expenses by 30% um, because you don't have to drive anymore somewhere where there's nothing to do, right? We can do these remote inspections uh, to basically uh, only focus on where we have the, the biggest problems. And um, this is uh, very often, to come back to what I said at the beginning, um, you know, space, we like to fly to moon. Uh, what happened when, when people were flying to moon, they looked back on Earth and it was um, the so-called overview effect. So they had a complete different, different picture of, of, of the planet and they were seeing things different. And we all can have like an overview effect light if we get the full picture from space. Another interesting side effect is that compared to other methods um, like car patrols or helicopter-based inspections or even, even planes uh, which are running on kerosene, um, we can reduce uh, the emissions by 99% with a satellite-based solution. So you see these three technology pillars which are enabling us to do this, what we couldn't do basically five to ten years ago. The first one is space, right? That's where my eyes are starting to shine. Um, in the past years, um, everyone knows Elon Musk, right? All these commercial rockets which, which started. But it actually was a bigger trend. So with the commercialization of the space industry, the second wave after the rockets were a lot of satellites. And these satellites measure in all different wavelengths. They measure on a sometimes even sub-daily basis with 30 centimeter accuracy. Um, so it, it's just a very huge data set. And um, with more than 60 utilities as customers on five continents, um, for us, we have to process very large data sets, right? Um, and now we could look with our human eye on all these beautiful space pictures, um, but that's, that's not scalable, right? So we're using artificial intelligence uh, to process uh, petabytes of satellite data. So data, AI. And basically for us, it was uh, from day one a decision to directly go into the cloud, um, in, into the AWS cloud, because we realized um, that this is the way to go. And I tell you one, one thing um, which, we, which we even see now after being five years in the business, um, the cloud is not expensive if you do it right. Um, there are so many technologies which reduce the cloud costs. And for us, um, the alternative would be a supercomputer, right? A supercomputer in the basement if you have to process these large data sets. And this is not scalable. This is not, not the way how we do it. So that's why uh, we decided for the AWS cloud. And uh, you now have 32 seconds to scan the QR code if you want to go to our website. Um, and uh, I'm really happy to talk to you here at the event uh, about how you can utilize data from satellites um, to improve um, and, and to better understand what's happening in our cities, countries, or at the entire continent. Thank you very much.